a pleasant uh, good evening to all the viewers and the listeners over here and a happy shri krishna janmashtami to one and all i am ravi kumar here based out of bangalore i am inviting all of you for the day 13th webinar series on the new national education policy of india 2020 so all these days for the last 12 days we have come across from the kindergartens level to the level of learning about the king's gardens till yesterday so from the childhood to the adult education we have covered the last 12 days topic with various eminent and expert speakers today this topic would be on the digital education on the national education policy 2020 so to discuss about this digital education in the national education policy we are having our two eminent and uh, expertise speakers mr abhinav shrivasa and miss sujata ravikant so let me start the day with the a brief uh, about what is digital education for me it thinks that uh, almost all the 138 crore people across the country of india are very much aware about the digital education today because of the pandemic the pandemic was a blessing in disguise for us to get ourselves educated about the digital education so the digital education and the online education which ensures the equitable use of technology from the kindergarten levels to the kings learning level so that's how this digital education is so important in day to day scenario in the learning arena so the digital education is the chapter 24 of the national education policy 2020 so the why this digital education is important and what are its new initiatives why was this brought up these things the new circumstances and the realities that is taking place in the recent past and the recent future as well to be much more precise this digital education plays a very important role amongst all the learners and all the educators learners whether they are educators illiterates literates or semi literates what we learned yesterday in the adult education the same thing learners are all learners because the entire life itself is a learning process that's why i term this life as an acronym l i f e as the learning institution for ever so this is how this learning goes on so today i would like to introduce myself first i am ravi kumar from bangalore a master trainer a coach mentor facilitator and also a spiritual trainer and a spiritual preacher i have done my technical education from the indian army i did so in the indian army for 3 decades and post which i am into this training and development for the last 17 years now during the journey of this 17 years i have come qualified as a international master trainer for faculty development program international master trainer for teachers trainings program that is ttp i am also a master trainer qualified and certified from british councils for english verbal ability i am also a coach for ielts toefl pte and the verbal ability part of it as that my core area of trainings are communication and interpersonal skills posh and a poxo enabler certified from the government of india ministry of hrd and this is a very small introduction about me otherwise uh, i would be consuming the time of this main speakers 
So with that, the institution that is the International Internship University, the IIU, is the major host and the responsible organization which is conducting this series of webinars on new education policy of India 2020. So to tell you all about the IIU, that is the International Internship University in brief, is a, it is the leading virtual education system and a global brand confederation, which is the most valuable and trusted worldwide and well reputed in delivering innovative programs. It is committed to providing highest quality education to all the learners of the globe, regardless of social economic background. IIU is providing access to more than 1,000 plus courses and internships to their e-learners across the globe. With the help of its committed, experienced, and high-caliber global educators, in a short span of time, IIU has spread its wings in 195 countries and six continents under the strong leadership of its visionary founder, Mr. Piyush Pandisar. A committed and inspiring social activist, a passionate educationist from the last two decades, providing education to students from various social and cultural backgrounds. Piyush Pandisar has publicized the world education policy which aims at one education, one foundation, and one world. In short, if I had to tell about this, this is what our mythology also speaks about, the Vasudevam Kutumbam, right? So all are one, all the world education, one education policy in the world. IIU has taken the initiative to reach every learner in rural as well as urban areas through the Vidyanjali project, an initiative by the Ministry of Education, Government of India, to provide higher education as well as vocational training along with the internship opportunities. IIU is the revolution in education. That's what I could say about IIU, a great institution which is really doing a great job across the globe. Now, as I already told you about the NEP digital education, now I am very much pleased and honored to invite Mr. Abhinav Srivatsava, the speaker for the day, to tell you something briefly about. Mr. Abhinav Srivatsava. Abhinav Srivatsava has an experience of 12 years in teaching and training. He has trained approximately 15,000 students from different backgrounds and 2,000 teachers regarding course creation, business growth, and branding. Area of interest, marketing and branding, digital marketing, and communication skills. He is the founder of digital agency www.brandcherchan.com as well as founder and trainer of High on Skills. A very warm welcome to you, Abhinav Srivastava, sir. So all are eager to hear from you about the digital education in the new education, sorry, new national education policy 2020 of India. So it is my privilege to invite you onto the platform, and the platform is yours. It's all over to you, sir. Well, thank you very much, sir, for this warm introduction. I'm really thankful for IIU for providing this kind of opportunity. Well, Kisina Kukai, Manzilis, and Pune, Hilti, Jinke Sapne, Bade Hote, 
मंजिलें उन्हें मिलती है जो जिद पर अड़े होते हैं और ये जिद मैंने देखी है आई के फाउंडर श्री पीयूष जी में द विजन ही हैज दैट इज टू प्रोवाइड द एजुकेशन टू ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड इज रियली अ वंडरफुल टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी एंड इन नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी वी आर फोकसिंग ऑन डिजिटल एजुकेशन so now i'm going to share my screen and let's talk about what is all about digital education and what is the vision of this new education policy 
One is the respect for diversity and the local context to be reflected in all curriculum and policies. It's not only about one language or two sects, English language or Hindi language. It's all also about the regional language. We have to learn the regional language as well as the language which is global. Equity and inclusion to become the cornerstone of all education decisions. Equality is must at every level. Equity theory we have to apply. Community participation, uplifting the community as a whole. Use of technology in teaching and learning environment. That is important. Today we are connected. How is it possible? The whole world is going to listen to us. What is the reason? Why? Only just because of technology. And these two to this technology, we can connect the, to all over the world and we can share the knowledge all over the world. Emphasize conceptual understanding, learning for exams with no root learning. So a lot of developments are required in the field of learning. And that's the reason interactive learning is important. Lot of platforms are available through which we can go and conduct different kinds of quizzes. Virtual apps are available through that we can go and conduct the different kinds of experiments. That is the importance of digital education. Unique capabilities, recognizing in each of the students. It's not only about not only about the mathematics or science, physics, or any other subject. It's all about in which field you are good, what is what are your capabilities, and how to hone those skills that is important. So we have to understand our skills. We have to do our own sort analysis. Teachers have to do the sort analysis of our students, and then on the basis of that, to develop the students in a holistic way. Critical thinking and creativity, that is the, another important aspect. That is the important vision. In each and every organization, when we talk about the corporates, when we talk about any other organization, in interview, lot of soft skills are required and critical thinking and creativity is must. We all talk about the create, creative thinking, how much creative you are. Everyone is doing the same thing, but how you do the things in a different way? What is your differentiation? What is your positioning that is important? And the continuous review based on sustained research and regular assessment by educational experts. So time to time, proper assessment are required. It's not only about the marks, it's about the all over development of the particular personality. So a student can grow themselves in a better way. Now, early childhood education, learning in the formative years. As we are aware that in the formative years, learning is important. Whatever we are developing, we can learn more when we are at this stage. Developing the curiosity that is important. If you are curious, if you have curiosity to know the things, then definitely we can learn a lot of things. So curiosity is important. Logical thinking and problem solving, arts, crafts, and music. Because if someone is good in arts, crafts, that move towards the creativity. Relationship with nature, we have to understand our environment. We have to understand how to protect our environment. We have to understand those relationships with the nature, color, shapes, alphabets, the proper behavior, etiquettes, emotional development. It's not only about the IQ, it's also about the EQ. Everyone is talking about the intelligence, okay, that's fine. But how you can control your emotions in different situations, how you react in different situations. You will work in corporate, you will work in organization, how you deal the different problems that is important and that is based on your EQ. Your self-identity, your locus of control. You are more towards the external locus of control or you are more inclined towards the internal locus of control. That is important. Ethics, okay, I'm good in hacking. I am good in computer science, coding, everything is fine. But now with this power you are using to steal the money of a different accounts, no, ethics are important. And that's why we have to develop or we have to inculcate the ethics in our young students. Play-based and discovery-based learning. The learning should be based on the different kind of plays, different kind of games. So team building how to understand others, 
how to understand the problem of others. That is important. That is the play-based and discovery-based learning. And teamwork and collaboration, because alone, we can't do anything. If we work in a team, if we work in collaboration, we can do wonders. So whatever the growth, whatever the speed of the growth, but if there is a collaboration, there is a teamwork, then that speed may be the 10 times or 50 times or 100 x. That depends on the purpose. So that is why the vision of the education policy is to develop the students in this holistic way. So ensuring education at all levels, multiple pathways to develop different kinds of education centers, to develop and build different kinds of schools, promoting go both government and non-government organizations, learning outcomes based on the focus, peer tutoring, that is important. Alternative centers are also important. That's why a lot of uh, acquisitions, a lot of joint ventures are going to take place. Bring back dropouts. And that's the reason. Maybe due to any X, Y, Z reason, if the student complete first year in a university and leave the organization due to some personal problem or maybe other reason, so the particular year will not go waste. So they, in, if someone is doing, if any student is doing one year course, then can get the certificate. If two years course, then get the diploma. If three years course, then get the degree. So whatever level you are, whatever you are doing, whatever the efforts you are taking, that efforts will not waste in your new education policy. Bring back dropouts, that is the purpose of education. Now the competency and subject integration. Now we are free. As a student, we are free to take different kinds of subjects, different combinations. It's not only about the PCM. Now with PCM, you can take the arts, you can take the English, you can take other subjects also. So the competency-based education, integration of different subjects, development of scientific temple, emphasis on digital literacy, and the promotion of multilingual teaching. Now, when we talk about the digital literacy, that means we are talking about with the help of digital technology, with the help of different digital platforms like Zoom, like Google Classroom, how much we are interacting, different kind of LMS are available. So how our organizations are using those LMS and we are creating those kind of courses for our students so they can go at any time, they can just click on that particular course and as per their timings, they can listen and they can learn, they can understand those things. So these are the important part of digital education. So when we talk about the integrating vocational education at all levels, so skill-based education, vocational education. And the, by 2025, at least 50% of the learners shall have exposure to vocational education. And that's why a lot of skill-based universities, skill-based organizations are coming in Delhi also. In Gurgaon also, there is an organization. Delhi government also introduced the organization that is based on, uh, on totally skill-based university. Skill gap analysis is important part. As per the survey, corporates are saying they don't have uh, their students who are passing every year, they don't have those skills which they require. So a skill gap analysis is important and that's why a lot of collaboration is required between educational institute and the corporates. So focus are based, focus areas are skill gap analysis and to develop those skills. And due to that, Setting up of Parakh. Now, what is Parakh? Parakh is the setting up of National Center of Performance Assessment Review and Analysis of Knowledge for Holistic Development. So a lot of guidelines are there. On the basis of those guidelines, every student has some kind of a score. And on the basis of that, they, we can assess the whole skill development. So what is the expected outcomes? These are important. The universalization of access, the first thing. Ensure equity and inclusion. Bring back two crores out of the school children. Attain SDG goals of retaining all children in a school until completion of the secondary education. Improve quality and achievement of learning outcomes. 
focus on 21st century skills that is important whatever the 21st century skills it's not only about your hard skills your soft skills are important and we have to work on that resource sharing among the schools effective governance that is important the norms common norms overcoming the language barrier in learning whatever the talent you have that talent should not be behind the language barrier and the common standards for public and private school education. So these are the expected outcome of that. So when we talk about the digital education, digital education is also known as the technology enhanced learning or e-learning, right? A lot of modules are available. When you are using digital technology, maybe mobile phone, maybe your laptop, your computer system, and learning through internet, that is called of digital education. This innovative use of digital technology is beneficial for both teachers and students. By exploring new ways, educators come up with a better and advanced form of teaching students. This helps in creating engagement and makers learning a fun activity. This mode of education has made learning very flexible. We are free to watch we are free to learn our modules anytime. It's not only about nine to five in the college, morning seven to two in the school. You can learn anytime after school also from through digital channels. A student can attend the classes from anywhere. And recently we have seen at the time of pandemic, when we are bound to live in our four boundaries of our home, we can learn a lot of things through digital education. So what are the different initiatives of, for digital education by the government? So there is a radio broadcast. There is a platform that is known as the Diksha. There is a platform like Swam Prabha TV channel as well as the Swam organization, PM eVidya and ePartshala for mobile phones. So these are the different initiatives. Anyone can visit, can search on Google about these, all those initiatives of the government. Lot of educational resources are there. You can find, you can register yourself as a teacher, you can register yourself as a student, and you can learn a lot of free resources over there. So these kind of things are really appreciable by the for the government. And we are learning through this, and we are moving towards our new digital system. Now I'm going to talk about the tools for teachers. What kind of tools are required? Being a teacher, we also have a lot of challenges. When the pandemic came, we were not too much used to work on Zoom and different kinds of other platforms. But now we all are learning and we have learned all those things. But day by day, a lot of new platforms are coming with a lot of creativity, with a lot of fun tools, with a lot of engagement. Because in online, what is the problem? There is a problem of engagement. Because it's a kind of one-way communication, not a two-way communication. So even for that, a lot of platforms are available. You can go on kahoot.com. And through kahoot.com, we can create a lot of quizzes. And all the students, all your audience can come at this one platform. And we can play different kind of quizzes and the different kind of rankings on the basis of that. So that is totally a fun and a kind of motivation is there. So these are the few things like if, as we all are aware about the platforms like Facebook and LinkedIn, for the recording tips, soundcloud.com is there. Animoto.com is there for different kind of video creations, different kind of infographics, canva.com is there. Drawing tools are available. Pictochart.com is available. So these are the things, these are the different websites and the tools by which we can go further in this area. So I feel digital education is kind of, we can say that it is helping us to grow in leap and bounds. We are learning a lot of things and through digital media, we can go. Now we are not in the boundaries. Now we are not limited to our own areas, to our own cities, to our own state, or even to our own countries. We can go beyond the countries. We can reach towards the whole world and we can create 
different kind of content. We can learn different kind of things from all over the world. And that is the purpose of digital education. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Avinu Srivastava, sir, uh, for uh, giving a magnificent uh, tips on the digital education with respect to National Education Policy 2020. Rightly, like what you have really said, the learning is not limited now. Learning is uh, all 24 by 7 round the clock. Right? One can get a, educated, not from a limited source. Now the source is totally expanded, limitless, what we can say. The sky is the limit for learning from anywhere across the globe, sitting at their own place, they can learn anything what they want. So, and learning is also free to learn at any time. It's not time bound. Right? So it was really beautifully explained by Yuki why it is not restricted to 9 to 5 or 10 to 6 uh, time frame, but anyone can learn with his or her own interest. And not only learn, can also make others also learn. Right. 24 by 7 at round the clock. Very beautifully spoken. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Now, with the so many benefits of this digital education, and which has been included in the National Education Policy 2020 in India. The most of the children, those who are into their middle class level, would be much more advanced than the children, those who belong to the millennial era or the the era of generation. Now, it is our turn to learn, in fact, from these children going forward for in the 21st century that we will be the learners and they will be the teachers. So with that, to talk about much more on that, it is my privilege and honor to invite Ms. P. Sujata Ravikant to tell in brief about Ms. P. Sujata Ravikant. She is an Associate Professor, Information Technology and DS Department, NRIIT Guntur, Andhra Pradesh. MD of Little Gems School, Mentor, a Parenting Coach, Career Counselor, Public Speaker, Coach, Motivator, Personality Development Trainer, Soft Skills Trainer, and Project Coordinator. She carries a two decades of experience in academics behind her, which itself speaks the huge volume of her quality and the knowledge she would be having in the academics field. So I would love to invite Ms. P. Sujata Ravikant to tell us more about this digital education in the National Education Policy 2020. The entire platform is yours, ma'am. Many viewers, listeners across the globe are waiting to hear from you. It's all yours. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Ravi Kumar, sir. Uh, really, from the bottom of my heart, uh, I would like to say a very big thank to you for your warm welcome. So, first of all, uh, whatever maybe the Ravi Kumar sir has given the introduction of me, you just erase all those things. Uh, uh, what I feel every day, I'm a learner, just like a student. I never mention in the classes that I'm going to teach something. Uh, I'll say, obviously, I'm going to share something. So, I'm a continuous learner. Okay. So, first of all, uh, let me talk about this uh, digital education. Irrespective of the age, irrespective of the gender, everyone, we are all 
can live without the oxygen, air, food, but can't with the digital education. It's highly impossible. Even though, see, we are not at all focusing on this point unknowingly, just like the food we are taking, just like the air we are breathing, we are using this digital technology too. So that's why I really love to share a lot of information uh, regarding this. Uh, along with my voiceover, I would like to share something to you so it will be easy for you to follow with me. All right, so I'd like to share some PPT here. All right. So as per my knowledge, digital education, it's like one uh, method, it's a technique. What we can collaborate here is nothing but, uh, what were the subjects we are going to learn? Apart from that, what are the technologies we are using? So it's the combi of these two, technology along with your electronic devices, what you're using. If just now Rekumar sir has mentioned like this, I, I actually uh, very fascinated about that sentence, Vasudeika Kutumba. See, just like the globe, whatever may be the country you may pick, whatever may be the place you may pick, irrespective of that, you can get the knowledge across the country by with the help of our digital education. So actually we can very strongly, we can conclude that statement, something like this, digital education in India is the future education and learning. And uh, I would like to mention some of the points here. Uh, of course, uh, for every problem, even though we may, fail, we may face a lot of challenges, but definitely we'll get the best experience too. So during the pandemic time, uh, we, we, you know, very much concentrated about this uh, physical distance, that this everything. So if I'm considering about this digital education, the first word itself, we are going to start with this. Without the physical contact itself, we can teach something, we can learn something, and we can get the immersive practice. And of course, we'll have the contact, but not the directly. It's just like the on-site contact. All right. So, and uh, like whatever may be the time, it may be the night or anything, any any time. Just you can sit in front of uh, your lappy and you can learn whatever you want. You can share whatever you want throughout the world, and. Uh, uh, let me, let me take this digital education with respect to uh, kids' point of view up to the king's point of view. Uh, all right, so let me take the first one here, kids' point of view. Uh, it's very easy for them, irrespective of, you know, uh, which, which kind of uh, uh, the pencil or the pen they're using, what about the writing skills, okay? Uh, without relevance of all these things, just sitting in front of the lab or in, in front of the laptop or the or whatever the devices, electronic devices they may have, they can start, you know, learning something. Uh, let me pick uh, just the few years. In fact, baby itself, nowadays, uh, I use it to see a lot of the ladies uh, are used to feed their kids by playing some rhymes and all uh, with the visual presentations only. So just like, uh, in my childhood, I used to play with the kids, but nowadays kids are playing with electronic watches. So that is the importance of our, you know, the visualization. Uh, students can very easily focus on what they are seeing. All right. So uh, we can cater multiple things like this. Uh, for example, I would like to teach Mahabharata Ramayana to my kids. It may not possible for me to sit, you know, in front of them and uh, uh, reciting something uh, from the books, 
and they have to concentrate it it's it, it may not possible but whenever if i'm having this reading book app i can give it to them and it's very easy so i can see without any uh, hard work i can just you know transfer my heritage my culture everything to the next generations through with the help of this uh, uh, digital education all right and whenever you are considering with respect to like eighth standard ninth standard kids uh, they can create their own ppts they can they can you know just play with the font sizes whatever they want right and they can use multiple softwares and uh, and music apps too uh, recently i have uh, actually uh, registered in some of the music apps so that i can learn some carnatic music all right so i i feel like age is just number so that's why i i whatever the interests are there whatever the hobbies are there i used to just you know try to grab the knowledge from the sources digital sources okay and uh, uh, pretty much i want to uh, talk about this uh, uh, very more important concepts like what is the uh, use of the simulators, virtual reality concepts. All right, so uh, it's very, very useful. Uh, what do you call the apps for the students? They can get the knowledge immediately. They can understand the things very better whenever we are using all these techniques. So variety of the learning tools for not only the teaching for learning and even assessment too. Uh, we can assess the student by by you know conducting a lot of tests and assessment it's not only meant for the subject point of view relevance to so many other disciplines like psychologically uh, emotional intelligence level which type of the personality they comes under all these types you know uh, uh, see if I, i'm considering the human being uh, disciplines, for example, 360 degrees, all these 360 degrees can be covered with the help of our digital education by using the different apps. All right, so let us talk about uh, what are the benefits of this digital education. The first thing oh, we all know about it, it's just like so interactive. Students, irrespective of their ages, uh, you know, they can get interact. And if they are not understanding something, if you're if you're talking about the normal regular classes, they used to you know hesitate a lot to ask to raise their voice in front of their peers. But whenever they have these recorded sessions and all, they are keeping on listening those topics, and they automatically they can get the clarification, and even they can raise their questions. Just maybe if that is the live session, they can ask the question either by chatting or talking something. Uh, you know, it's a two-way communication. It's not the single-way communication. Whenever we are talking about the interactive sessions, and. Uh, and the, the points are, you know, uh, what do you call very crisp. Whatever I want to deliver, just focus to that particular point, irrespective of uh, wasting our time much. And by using all these electronic gadgets, actually, uh, we can complete the tasks in, 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 you know, much faster rather than when compared with the normal routine regular way. And moreover, one more thing, what I'm observing is whenever we are allowing the kids you know to interact with this uh, digital education uh, they, they're they're going to get a lot of vocabulary too whenever they're studying their online materials whenever they're hearing some lessons because of that the, the vocabulary is also getting increased that's very good and one more is they can learn what whenever they are feel free uh, see, they don't have any fixed research schedule this time to this time. You have to sit, you have to concentrate whether you're interested or not. No, it's not like that. They have the time boundary with them in the brain. Within this schedule, I have to learn up to this part. So whatever maybe the time they use to convenient, they feel convenient, they can sit in front of the system and they can learn that maybe the night or the day, it it's depends, depends upon their interest. All right. And uh all right whenever if i i want to do something on my own obviously i'm going to pay a lot of interest on that irrespective of compulsory constraints so that's the beautiful thing of our digital education and uh, all right for example uh, I, I 
I have I want to learn something. It's a new programming language for me. But whatever the lecture uh, that is from my institution, if that is not up to the mark, it's so easy for me. Just like within second, I can download a lot of online material, or I can interact with the tutors who are available in the online. Like whatever maybe the advanced programming courses, advanced languages like. Uh, Python programming, R programming, artificial intelligence, machine level language, all these, all these just like that I can get the material. So I, I, I'm going to get a lot of guidance from the external world. So it's a very a beautiful point of the digital education. All right. So a lot of billions, billions, hundred billions of the peoples are using the mobile phones. Are uh, they, they do have the internet connection. So why not? Why can't we use this digital education? It's damn easy, right? So they don't have to pay any amount. A lot of you know free services are available. They can use that uh, instead of you know buying something, going to somewhere, doing so much of the hard work, either financially. With respect to the time point of view, everything can be manageable if we are talking about the digital education. And here, obviously, definitely, I have to agree with this point. Uh, before a decade, I used to search only from the library, whatever the textbooks are there, prescribed textbooks, only from that I used to collect the information. But now, no. Right now, with which trend there are the people following, maybe the international wide, I can simply download it, I can understand that, and I can share it to my students. That is because of my technology only. So that's why uh, being a teaching point of view, I can, you know, I can, what do you call, increase my capability with the help of this uh, digital education, so, all right? But uh, what are the requirements we need for this digital education is nothing but obviously we need digital infrastructure, online platform, and we have some, you know, information content, our contents should be prepared and we should use some digital repository system and virtual labs and i, I want to highlight this point uh, i don't know how many of you people are aware of this virtual labs uh, all right we have uh, some kinds of the labs here uh, previously only for uh, either let me pick some technical point of view if i'm picking some physics experiment i want to you know, uh, I want to just to find it out what is the resistance of a particular wire. Uh, you know, I have to go to the physics lab, pick it up the devices, doing, uh, you know, connecting the points. I have to apply some voltages and current, then only I'm going to get some physical manual report of mine. But whenever I'm talking about this virtual lab simulations, it's damn easy for me. Just I'm going to pick, click, and drag, and whatever the circuit I want to construct within seconds, I can complete that. If that not at all working right, it's damn easy for me, okay, to again go back and picking some of the devices so that I'm able to get the right output. I can understand it betterly, you know, without uh, you know wasting of the money and all. So that is the importance of the virtual labs. All right, I'm going to give you two more virtual labs. Uh, very, very useful, uh, even from up to the uh, school standard kids, or maybe the UG level or the PG level students can use those labs. It's damn easy. Okay, and uh, yeah, so see this one. Uh, whenever I'm talking about this digital applications, uh, let me pick it up, help and technology point of view. Uh, you you can do the eye exercises and water reminder whenever you a simple applications actually all these are using very commonly in, in the world right see whenever you are a working person you're quite busy since morning to till evening obviously you may forget to take the water even so you can have a smartwatch or some app in your mobile which keeping on reminding you for every 30 minutes uh, yeah you have to take one glass of water and footstep counter. Nowadays, we know the importance of the walking that can be performed just by using my smart watch here. And one more, this one, I think a lot of people know ab ab about it, Arugia Setu app. 
during the pandemic, our government have introduced this Arugia Set You app. Uh, right, it, it is uh, mainly meant for the uh, corona positive patients. Whenever if you're giving, uh, you know, you're taking the test of the corona, if, if your result is the positive, then your result has been uploaded in this app. So wherever you go, it will track you and it is going to mention the rest of the people whoever have connected to this app they're going to say that so beside you some corona positive patient is there be aware so like this a lot of smart up applications are there they're being keeping on developing for our sake okay so just now have mentioned about this virtual lab see this one olab edu.in and we lab virtual lab co.in these two are very useful uh, labs as per my knowledge okay so just like what i said you, you may have to do the physics lab or the chemistry lab you can go with the o labs online labs and one more is the virtual lab so any programming language like the C programming language or the Python programming language, uh, you can do it beautifully with a simulation point of view. See, you may write, for example, 10 lines of the coding. What will happen uh, after execution of each and every line over there? You can see that one. Uh, it's a very beautiful concept. Students can get the you know, knowledge immediately as soon as they're going to interact with this. All right, so these are all, whatever I, I'm talking with you, whatever I'm sharing with you, all these because of, of our national education policy. So uh, 2020, continuously, they are doing a lot of the hard work to, you know, present in front of our eyes. Okay, see, whatever the websites are there is actually association of, uh, you know, a very, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, pretty famous and eminent professors of different universities. See, when I was a student, it's like dream for me at least to listen a class from IIT Kharagpur. But now it's damn easy. Just sitting in the park or in my room, it's damn easy for me. So because of all this is nothing but, again, the same thing. So for each and every topic, we may have the pros and cons, even for the digital education. Just now I have been highlighting all the plus, then what about the minus now? All right. So uh, obviously, of course, it is expensive. It, I'm not talking about only, uh, what do you call, uh, just like free source i'm not talking about if you're uh, if you're taking consideration of the schools they are having uh, this online uh, education system definitely they're going to charge more rather than because they need the infrastructure all right and moreover uh, right being a facilitator if i'm having all the requirement all the setup it's not enough even for the receiving point of view also at the student home also they have to maintain the minimum infrastructure all right so without that it, it may not possible okay and and just like uh, you know because of my uh, signal problem or some other problem i may get some disturbances uh, i have to face this one see whenever uh, I'm, I'm talking about the regular class work the schedule is fixed since morning from nine to some evening four this is hours so on so person is going to take if he or she may be in the leave they may adjust it to the another one but that is not with my online education system if some problem is there uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, pathetically, I have to wait for some minutes at some time uh, so that I, I may get back to my connection back, okay? And uh, at this point, uh, actually, I want to stress a little bit, uh, are we decreasing the creative levels of our kids? Uh, all right, see, uh, for example, if, if we are reading a book, all right, along with the transcription, my mind going to imagine something as per the sentences as per uh, what do you call the narration of uh, the particular writer but whenever we are everything we are showing uh, along with the sound as well as the picture so i have a little doubt in my mind that are we suppressing the creativity of the kids it's a question mark for me so 
uh, of course, uh, we are not at all completely digitized in all the ways. We are just taking the help of the digitalization up to some extent. We are expecting furthermore, okay? And uh, even if you pick a small kid up to the UG or PG level students, they, they are, you know, become a little bit lazy while doing the calculations or while recollecting the answers from their main brain instead of, you know, uh, using their brains, it's completely, they are depending upon this internet. They're keeping on asking, uh, Googling. So uh, I think a little bit problem with this is nothing but definitely maybe laziness can increase. Okay. And at the very most important point for us is security. Security for what? All right. See, we may not expect always the good uh, character from our kids unknowingly because the age is like that unknowingly uh, you know they may not always concentrate on only uh, the positive kind of things from the internet fine unfortunately they may get they may get uh, you know uh, interacted with the so-called other information also it's a very big problem so we being the parents as well as the teachers we have to counsel the kids uh, all right uh, our, our children so which is good and what is bad how to use this advanced technology and all and one more uh, after seeing some of uh, you know advertisements and all i used to always keeping on about this also we are talking about the garbage different types of the garbages but what about the digital garbage? Everyone are we, we are using the mobiles, uh, that is everything, millions, 200 millions of people are using. Then what about this digital garbage? Uh, what to do with this? I have a little a small question on this. Finally, I, I would like to conclude this thing with a technology in education is a journey and not a destination. So we are the travelers, we have to travel. I don't know the destination. So uh, before winding up my this thing, uh, I would like to say my sincere thanks to International University, uh, Snigdha ma'am and Ravi sir for giving me this beautiful opportunity to me. Thank you once again. Thanks you. Thank you so much, <coughs> Sujata ma'am, uh, for uh, really giving us such a wonderful uh, insights on the digital education. And uh, really appreciating was uh, the points are the highlighting the points uh, were uh, like uh, <coughs> saying, it was uh, really distinct, you were saying that you know, age is just a num number, it really, took me back to my uh, CSR sessions uh, when I used to do it uh, for the college students, uh, right? Uh, so I used to tell them, you see, age is not just a number, but with that number of your age, you can learn a lot of life skills. Because the number of your age, if you start calculating, you just start calculating for how many days, how many hours, or how many minutes, you have spent it for learning because life is nothing but a learning institution forever. Yeah. Every second you have learned something or the other, whether you have done a good thing or in any adverse effective sessions. So it was beautiful. Uh, I really want to resonate with that point of it. Uh, and uh, beautifully explaining the benefits of the digital education. Uh, very frankly speaking, uh, it really extends uh, the ability of the learners for exploring and doing R&D. And uh, with this exploring and the R&D, the learners can really become much more innovative. And the flexibility to learn. So as previously, even um, Abhinav Srivastava sir was saying, the flexibility in learning, learning can happen Round the clock, 24 by 7, 365 days. And uh, one more benefit of that uh, was uh, the recorded versions available on the 
ये प्लेटफॉर्म एर वन कैन रिपीटेडली लिजन टू इट एंड कैन मेमोराइज सो दस आल्सो अनदर बेनिफिट एंड इट्स आल्सो ए दिस इन लाइक एक्सपैंडेड सर्च राइट इवन द सर्च द लर्निंग इज नॉट लिमिटेड वन कैन गो आउट ऑल ऑल आउट टू लर्न फ्रॉम द ऑनलाइन दे दे कैन expand their learning right from the just from the books library to the digital library the even the books are not limited here and uh, beautifully said with the digital or the virtual labs that are available just like the example you gave like the simulators even the driving even if you just get into a driving school today to learn whether a two wheeler or a four wheeler first you will be given the simulator to learn with that to no about the vehicle so this sort of digital education is really helping and it's also beneficially carrying out the areas of utilization of uh, digital platform and from learning from the optional subjects to the healthcare to finance to many more things where one can learn sitting at his or her place itself they need not go out searching someone expert hires or expert person for learning anything and also beautifully explained about the adversities about the digital learning uh, which is a uh, very must for all the people to understand but only the thing is that even if you look at the other side of the adversities you find only the positive things like the one you really explained ki the students are the learners are dropping out of their physical intelligence which i really appreciate ki students even if you ask what is 36 plus 64 they are not be able to tell immediately it is 100 and then they immediately their finger goes to mobile very true really i appreciate that so this artificial intelligence are the virtual intelligence which is really taking over the uh, <coughs> physical intelligence of the learners but how you beautifully camouflaged it with uh, saying that those type of children needs to be counseled very frequently very quite often they needs to be counseled the adverse effects also but keeping that adverse effects if you can make the others also to learn with physical intelligence how to improve their physical intelligence is really wonderful and the entire session was spellbound and i really appreciate your involvement uh, in the presentation the, in the speech that you were giving hey, i was mesmerized in fact why sujata ma'am is not moving her slides because i knew that whatever was there in your mind was much more than what was there in the slides right true that was the involvement you carried in your speech today real appreciable this thing thank you so much for delivering such a beautiful uh, insights to all the viewers across the globe and with that uh, i think uh, sir is not there available uh, shiva sir sir as uh, i think uh, yes left the thing because of uh, Uh, some uh, technical issues or uh, something else uh, with this i would like to ask uh, one thing uh, that uh, the digital education the limits of the digital education to whom it is can this digital education be extended to all the categories if so what are the pedagogy or the methods that one can adopt to make the uh, to make others to learn much about the digital education right um sir that's what the, i have mentioned here learners are uh, as per my knowledge it's not the engineering graduates or some other thing i may pick the farmers they can learn how to do the farming uh, in a new by using the different new technologies 
uh, you may pick any village background chefs also they can learn how to prepare the chinese and thai food just by watching the youtubes and all but what what is a, a one thing i would like to mention here uh, the basic of communication whatever the digital education we are developing we are very focusedly concentrating on only the english all right but if you implement all these in uh, uh, in different uh, native languages also then it's a damn easy that irrespective like any rural village you may pick you know they can be attracted and binded towards this uh, digital education what i believe yeah very true very nicely said ma'am and i i also uh, think that uh... the same digital education can be learned in uh, the native language also if the help of the translators that are available uh, but that is not happening sir yeah. really yeah but one needs to implement that uh, with the translators uh, and even the native languages ca people can also learn it yeah we as a learners i would like to say this uh, very much we as learners if we become much more uh, Uh, what do you call it as uh, socially oriented uh, towards the learning mm. and plan to do such social services we can really make changes in the rural areas by making them to learn this digital educations in the native language because we belong to that particular rural area and we know that rural language yeah sorry for the interrupt you sir i would like to mention one point here Yeah. recently yeah jntu kakinara university has you know introduced a community based project to the engineering graduates so yeah. yeah so just a few months back itself we have taken our students to the nearby villages and you know they have, they have take a survey with the local farmers and all what are the problems they are facing uh with respect to the water or the farming or something else our students have taken the initiation to approach to the government people too very true yeah so in this way we are doing our level best sir within our area yeah that's true that's what i mean to say it's not just enough uh, limited the number of uh, educators doing it i would really love if uh, all the educators take the pledge that we yes. should make each and everyone to learn on this digital platform and we should make everyone to be much more familiarized with this digital platform and taking those social initiatives by people like us the educators would really help the nation and also take forward the vision and mission of this uh, national education policy 2020 to a very greater height Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, all the viewers, the dignitaries of the International Internship University, Dr. Snigda, ma'am, and also the founder, Mr. Piyush Pandey, sir, one who is really put out all his heart to creating this platform and extending all his uh, hearts for the globe to know. about this national education policy of india 2020 and giving this platform to so many learners so many educators so many resource persons and making everyone to present their views and learn much 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 ahead of what we know all these days thank you so much everyone and i also thank all the team members of the international internship university for patiently listening to us and patiently watching this webinar day 13 for on this very auspicious day of janmashtami thank you so much i thank one and all thank you so much